Hi, this is Jay Easley with Midas and Clark Technic in the Americas. I wanted to walk you through the brand new Pro 6 digital mixing system. And what we have here, looking at the surface of the Pro 6 system, is a complete control surface, minimum amounts of options that you can go in and dig deep in. Right on the surface, on every fader channel, actually have everything that I need going through the fader channel, starting with the gain knob, gain always being gain, right into my compression and my dynamics of gates, right into my EQ section, my routing into the matrix ends, my routing into the masters, my pans and my Midas Special SIS system, right down to my toggle selection into the channel itself. Everything you need is on the surface of the console, therefore eliminating the layers of getting down to something that you're trying to get to. So that is what makes the Pro 6 not only unique, but very, very functional to use when in a live application. So getting into the console itself, I have 16 input channels, and that's a little bit different than input faders. There's a lot of desks that have a lot of faders on them. We actually have, again, the full input strip on every single channel on, on the surface. So 16 input faders at any given time. Natively on the console, we can do 56 inputs. Looking at a network that's capable of 264 inputs and 264 outputs. On the surface, I can control 56 of those channels natively. Or if I get a little creative, I can actually control up to 80 inputs on the console at any given time. What we do when we look at a surface of this size is we're talking about mixing audio. And Midas' belief is to actually bring the input channels to the engineer rather than having the engineer go out and try to find the audio channels. So if I'm quickly trying to get to my keyboard section, instead of remembering that keyboards were 36 and 37, I would actually assign the keyboards, more than likely, into a VCA on the console, of which on the Pro 6, I have 10 VCAs. So if I was to assign that, let's say VCA 4, I would assign my console channels by pressing and holding that, selecting 36 and 37 into the inputs, and now I've created a VCA just for keyboards. So when I press my VCA, no matter what mode I'm in here on the surface, or no matter where the faders are, when I hit my VCA for that channel, it brings up those channels I just selected. So my VCA control, obviously, on my VCA remote here, and the channels that I want in that VCA console. So instead of having to think of going to channel 36 and 37, after I would label this, color code it, as you can see here, we did some color coding, I would hit keyboards and get to my keyboards quickly. Same thing with the drums. When I assign drums, I need to think about the drums in VCA1, or wherever you would like to put them. I hit that, and here's all my drum channels. So again, if I need to go quickly from the drums to the keyboards, keyboards to the drums, drums to the keyboards, keyboards to the drums, I don't have to go all the way out here and find 36 and 37. I bring that input to me. So what we do is we simplify that process and that the engineer, the mix engineer, stands where he wants to stand. He certainly has full capability of the entire desk, but what we find is they start assigning everything to VCAs, which we all do, and start bringing those inputs to me as they are on the stage. The next set of bu buttons up here, the other creative side of what we're doing with Midas Pro 6 as well as the Midas XL8. Similar to the VCA, I can actually create a bank, a population group, with any combination of any of the inputs basically at any given time. Unlike the VCA where I actually have to sonically group things together that I want on a VCA, this is simply for populating the channels I want to get to quickly right here to my left. So this can be a bank of whatever crazy stuff you want to do. If I just want to quickly get to the lead vocal, the lead guitar, and the bottom snare channel, I could do that here if I wanted to. Again, maybe population group two is an input channel that I need to get to quickly, like the MC microphone or the lead vocal microphone all by itself. I would assign that the same way. Press and hold the population group, select the channels I want in the population group, let it go, and there's the channels I've now put in that pop group essentially bringing those input channels to me. Labeling these in full capability from the keyboard that's on board here, controlling that from the mouse, and labeling and color coding those as ever I want. Again, making it very simple for the mix engineer to get around the console. We have six pop groups on the Pro 6. We have 10 VCAs on the Pro 6. Again, 56 channels natively, 80 very creatively. Also on board, I have a full gamut of effects units hopefully you can see that there, that I can assign into this device at any given time. One of the favorite devices is the classic Clark Technic DN780, which is a classic verb and delay unit that has been used in many, many racks across the world for many years. Well, Alex Cooper at Midas and, and the guys at Clark Technic actually digitized this and put it in the Pro 6. 
So I have a number of effects units that I can pull up here and make them on board. A standard configuration on the Pro 6 would be eight stereo effects units racked in the rack, as well as eight graphic EQs at any given time. With our DSP engines that we actually run within the console, we're able to run all those, as well as insert any of the onboard compression and gating dynamics within the console, insert every EQ, turn on every single insert, outsert, goes into, goes out to, and never run out of DSP on the Pro 6. This is absolutely critical. When we talk about our DSP racks here in a minute, I'll show you what I mean. We future-proof these consoles because lifespan of Midas is much longer than most. So we don't put in a computer that basically does what it does with no room for expansion. We build expansion in because we may add capability of more effects units, different plugins, if you will, some different patching capabilities, some monitoring, some different things like that. And of course, from the surface, I can also do a number of other things. With something as simple as a KVM switch that we've built into the back of the Pro 6, I can actually patch in some different things, look at them at any given time. I actually have three of those KVM switches here on the surface. I don't have anything patched in there right now for you to see. But let's say that could be my Smart Live rig or a Sistune rig from Isra. It could be my system drive. If you're driving an ElectroVoice PA, it would be IrisNet or like a Lake Contour drive system. And perhaps even I've got a movie in my MacBook that I want to watch. I can patch it in there and, and have a good show while I'm mixing a show. It's got kind of some convenient features. Three of those are allowed. We'll uh, move around to the back of the surface momentarily here, but the thing to keep in mind with the Pro 6 overall is everything is on the surface that you need. I don't have to dig down to the layers to find it. The audio in this is 96K all the way across through every single engine. It's 96K 24-bit. So true, pure Midas quality audio. And of course, when we designed our first digital desk, the XL8, the question was, does it sound like a Midas? And in the words of many mix engineers and longtime XL4 engineers, they say, it sounds better. So we're very proud of this desk. But I want to take you around to the back and show you the DSP engine and really what the guts of this thing can do. So come with me. In this rack right here, you see a lot of blinking lights. That is the engine that drives the Pro 6. We have one, two, three, four, five, DSP cards that actually do all the processing for the surface and the mixing that is happening inside the Pro 6 system. You'll see an empty slot here, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and you'll see the 6 card right there lit up. That 6 card is my redundant card, so if one of these cards happened to go down, in the rare instance that would happen, the 6 card would actually start to take over. If for whatever reason the 5th card went out, the 6 card took over and it went out, that would be a bad day at the office, first of all. But you're not going to lose audio. You're not going to lose signal. What you're going to start to lose is little functionality of the console. It might lose your eighth stereo effect channel. That's really what's going to start to happen. And it's going to go all the way down. The key thing about Midas is the redundancy and that the audio must play. So even if I lost power to the desk, the surface, this thing will still pass audio. It does whatever the last thing I told it to do, it keeps doing. This empty slot here is actually, we talked about expandability. That's for a future expansion DSP. So I would actually add, right now we have plenty of DSP in there to drive. Like I said, if you engage everything on the console, you will, you will not run out of DSP. That being said, as we move forward in our technology, we may be adding more things to the console. Different plugins, maybe some more input channels, maybe some more graphic EQs and things. For that, we might need to add some more DSP, so we keep that in there for future expansion. Most digital desks, they are what they are, and that's all they are. Again, Midas, we think long-term, because when you make the investment into it, we expect you to hang on to it for a long time. Down below is the standard stage rack with the Pro 6. As it comes configured off the shelf, it is 56 inputs and eight outputs in the analog domain. Those are the same cards that live in the back of the Pro 6, so that can be configured however you wish, but that is kind of the off-the-shelf package. I connect to my DSP via AES50, CAT5E, and again, there's my link of HyperMac down to my digital desk and the Surface right there. Very, very simple system, very easy to use, very intuitive, and at the end of the day, it sounds like a Midas, feels like a Midas, and mixes like a Midas. So thanks guys for stopping by, really appreciate it, we'll talk with you soon.